create opportunities to mainstream it with a different kind of content. Across private and public and our non-profit partners now, Amman, Beirut, Tanzania, Johannesburg, Karachi, and London, six channels are running in parallel to discuss the empowerment of challenges and successes. These allow us to welcome our distinguished panel here, this very level of a high inspired leader who is recognized for bridging the world of social impact and business. <laughs> The founder of Landmark Hotel and most recently the founder of 17 Ventures, an impact investment and advisory firm specialized in sustainable development goals and innovative clients. And of course, our amazing panelist, her excellency, Ms. Nadia Zay. The floor is yours. Thank you, All right, so that's uh, fantastic. Uh, good luck, uh, and we'll be here to your conclusions uh, in about 45 minutes or so as well. Uh, we can now go to Amman, I think. Uh, and India is chaired by Mary Lazano, barrister, social entrepreneur, uh, named as one of Forbes magazine's most powerful Arab women. Uh, Mary, uh, I hope you can hear me. Just yes. talk us through your panel quickly. Hi, Sam, can you hear us? We can, that's perfect. Oh, what a fantastic studio you've got there. Yeah, yes, okay, um, fire away with your time. Great, so hi from Amman. We're very excited to be broadcasting live from the capital of Jordan. We have a phenomenal and diverse panel with us today. We have Her Excellency Halal Atul, Her Excellency Haitha Najjar, Her Excellency Wafat Bani Mustafa, uh, and Her Excellency Nadia Saeed, and of course, uh, Ms. Nina Abu Jalal. We'll get started soon. You've out uh, excellent in us here in London. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, uh, now, now we go to uh, Johannesburg and we have uh, Yolanda Mabuse from Turkey. Well, a moment ago from Greeting, but uh, Yolanda, good to uh, see you. Talk us through your group, please. All right, we, we do have a moderator in Johannesburg, it's not uh, Yolanda. And uh, hello to everyone. I can't say it's good afternoon because it is afternoon in Johannesburg, but I see that it's uh, morning and evening in other parts of the, of the world. And thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you. On our panel, uh, we do have Yolanda Mabuto, who is founder of uh, Divine and uh, our host today. We also have Roxana uh, Mudan, who is uh, an international business executive uh, mindset coach. Uh, but some of us need just the mind shift uh, to tap into our potential, and she's going to be helping us with all of that. And uh, Ms. Lau Zimogami, who is CEO of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South African International Forum, and former BRICS chairperson on agriculture, uh, working with the Women Group, and founder of uh, Leading Ladies of Africa. And we also have Annie Villem, who is uh, head of women president. Organization South Africa, she founder and chair of division of uh, Crossroads Company and head of uh, the Women President Organization in South Africa, which is a WPO. And we also, um, she also focuses in June 2019. Um, she chaired the Women Advantage uh, TWA in South Africa and uh, founded the Women in Business Accelerator. And we also have men in our midst. Uh, Mr. Johnny Muteva, who is founder at Africa Trade Organization, Pan African Chamber of Commerce, and Africa Entrepreneurship Fund, and Pan African TV Television. And we also have Mr. Ivan Skip, who is um, a, an events director from Speed Intelligent. Um, some of the uh, events are African Utility Week and Feature Energy Shows. And these are shows and, and exhibitions that insist 
uh, assist Africans on access of energy and operating from East and West Africa. And that's our partner for this afternoon. And of course, we have a great audience here in Johannesburg. And I just find half of three, I'd like them to just shout top of their voices that you know there are human beings here. One, two, three. Hello, Tommy. <laughs> I think we're going to get started because we're not Johannes, so we need to focus on Jordan. So I'm just going to do some introductory remarks so everybody here knows what's happening, especially if you weren't here last year. So I'd like to welcome you to the Athena 40 Global Conversation. It's entitled Making the Case on Female Leadership to Mark International Women's Day and Support SDG 5. Um, thank you to Injaz and thank you to the chairperson of Injaz. Uh, Salim Karachi for being with us today, and welcome Ambassador Oden as well. So we are, as you can see, part of nine panels and an audience of about 500 change makers. That was Tim Wilcox from BBC World who's moderating um, the whole event. So Athena 40 is an international platform connecting, connecting women to networks, information, resources, and recognition. It was launched under the Global Thinkers Forum in 2018, and it engages, engages women from all over the world. I'd like to make one exciting announcement, uh, that this April 23rd, the Global Thinkers Forum will host the Athena 40 Forum in London. Uh, this is a forum that brings together decision makers from all over the world under the theme, Women Leading the Way. And the day will culminate in a gala dinner, and it's under the patronage of Her Royal Highness Princess Sophia from Jordan. And uh, you can visit athena40forum.com to see the speakers and the agenda. And everybody here is invited to the forum, which will take place at the British Library. And you all have complimentary tickets if you care to travel to London. So now turning to our esteemed panelists, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'd like to first draw attention to the diversity um, on this panel, knowing that diversity brings so much knowledge and so much power. So as was mentioned, I come from a social justice and political justice background, and now have gone very deeply into the world of you know, investing with purpose, investing with intentionality. And we have Lina Abu Jarade, who is an entrepreneur focused on activism through art. She founded a social initiative called Art to Smile to empower marginalized youth through art. Next to her on the right, we have Her Excellency Nadia Zaid, who is the CEO of Translate to Us since 2008. And prior to that, she served as the Minister of ICT. Here we have Her Excellency Waba Beni Mustafa, MP, who's been elected for three subsequent terms. She was the youngest MP uh, in 2010 and won her second parliamentary seat outside the women's quota. Her Excellency Haitha Najjar, Senator, of course, from the Upper House, and Superintendent of Ahliya School for Girls and Bishop School for Boys, and Her Excellency Hala Latou, Human Rights uh, Women's Activist, former Senator, and former Minister of Social Development. That was really quick, but because to do justice to each of the three, these ladies, that would need about 10 minutes, but we want to go into the substantive issues that are facing women in Jordan and beyond. So I'd like to start with you, Satala, to set the scene and the context for our discussion. So Jordan, despite its unique resilience, has been under considerable pressures, I would say. Uh, unemployment, uh, water scarcity, the influx of our brothers and sisters from neighboring countries. You know, where does that leave women in Jordan? Where are we? What still needs to be done? If you could just set the scene for us. Sure, thank you, and it's a really an honor. Okay, it's a pleasure to be here. Okay, everybody here, thank you. Um, as you mentioned, things right now are more than that. Allow me just to go a bit back, back uh, backward, just so that you know that when we started 20 years ago, and I've been there for quite some time, we had much, uh, I thought we'd be somewhere else. However, I would like to start on a positive note. Uh, in Jordan, we had a government where we had seven ministers, 25 ministers, 25% uh, of ministers. We have more than a quarter with the MPs. We have the percent of female judges increased from 5% uh, in 2015 to 22%. So we have a woman plumber, a woman driver, 
the union women are very educated, more than half of the women universities occupy a few places as women. So we have a lot of positive issues to celebrate. However, do I think we are where we should be? I think starting 20 years back, I thought we'd be somewhere else. And I don't think that's all due to internal and external uh, reasons. Uh, we live in a very tough neighborhood to say the least. Uh, and I have to say, I'm very proud of the union and the union women who have made it in very tough situations. On the gender gap report, we are 138, so your excellency, 38, you're just 100 back from the Netherlands. Out of 153, due to mainly to the economic and political. Uh, our health and education have more or less stayed the same, but with the pressure of refugees, and Jordan has really one out of five Romanian is a refugee, has taken a lot, a lot of share, and I'm very proud. I think if there was a, um, a trophy or a gender gap for humanitarian citizenship, I think Romanians and Romanian women were fair the top. Why women in particular? Because women work a lot in the informal sector, and when you have influx of refugees, these are the first jobs that really women lose. And so the women have to make enemies. And, the, and right now, just to give you uh, some statistics, only one out of five women, so who can work is working. Unemployment for you is at 38% for, for, uh, for females and 50-something for females. That's very high. That's way high. And so these are the real problems. And what worries me is when you are trying to make ends meet, Report in a tough situation is always much more difficult. So I would suggest changing the mindset. And I've seen too many things didn't work. I believe, like you, in social justice. I think it has to be a social transformation where you look at the mindsets, you look at legislation, you look at the family structure, you look at education. Uh, women issues are not just something else we add to the to-do to -do list. It's changing society. It's changing the way we see everybody and everything. And that is much harder when <coughs> things are tough and there's so many challenges to, uh, to bear. Um, so I am positive. I will always be positive because I believe in the will to change. And we do have political support from His Majesty. And at least that helps us to, to go through tough times. So yes, I am positive. I think very clearly. One last note I always like to say. I'm glad this is about leadership. We speak a lot about women empowerment, and I really would like us to think about women empowerment to power. If women do not reach power, I'm sorry, women empowerment does not work. We have to look at the power structure and who is making the decisions and where we are in those power structures. And women empowerment is part of a way to be fair. Well, women want to be part of it or not, but at least we have the option and the structures to do that. And that's uh, just quickly from. I have my problems because uh, in English because I always think in Arabic. Um, so we are in, in the process. We are in the process in Jordan. Uh, we move from why women in political uh, uh, in political uh, life to how engage more women to uh, political uh, life in Jordan. I think um, the legislations and the key laws and the COCA system help the women uh, a lot here uh, in Jordan because you know uh, we start uh, being in the uh, parliament uh, since uh, 1,900 uh, 
93 with the one baby, she was uh, uh, a person, and we reached out to, uh, to have uh, 20 uh, ladies uh, in the parliament and uh, uh, with a percentage about 15.4. And the same, uh, about the same percentage also in the uh, Senate. Uh, so I think um, uh, it is uh, a process and a long term process. And as uh, uh, Hala mentioned, the, uh, the ministers, the women ministers uh, in, uh, inside uh, the government start uh, this, uh, Dr. Omar Razal started government with seven ladies with 25 percent but now we have only four ladies and four women in, uh, in the government uh, with uh, only uh, 14 percent so uh, it is not um, um, a stable uh, process uh, also so we need always to have the guarantees uh, during the uh, the laws and the, during uh, the constitution uh, in Jordan. Um, uh, because of that, uh, I think the quota system uh, inside the laws help uh, a lot. Uh, if you look into the municipalities uh, law, they put uh, 25, but uh, women uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the election win more than 36%. Uh, when we put the uh, quota for the decentralization uh, election uh, inside the parliament with uh, a great cooperation between uh, the women uh, in, in the parliament and in the Senate, uh, we put it 15%. Uh, uh, and uh, now the government uh, talking about the uh, new draft of the local administration uh, though they're talking about 50% uh, as a quota for the uh, local uh, administration uh, law uh, with the uh, elected uh, seats. So um, uh, I think we achieve a lot and we need to have two things. To say the, 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 the achieving uh, and uh, to, to, uh, to also to build uh, on it. Uh, to get more, uh, I think the uh, the, uh, the also the, the very important things is uh, to having to to having the same system of the quota system uh, inside all the election uh, uh, levels uh, in uh, in Jordan. This is uh, will be uh, also very important because uh, it's not um, fair to have only. Uh, 15 seats in the parliament, whereas the, the authority and the change and the power, as Alan mentioned, and uh, uh, to, in the municipalities, they give us uh, more. They give us uh, more because the, the power is uh, more, uh, less. Uh, and uh, the change, yeah, because of, because of that, we didn't have any mayor, any mayor, female in, uh, in Jordan. We have a lot of members. And they allow us to, to be uh, members, but uh, it's very tough to women to be uh, uh, there uh, inside the municipalities. Um, uh, uh, so, um, as uh, also uh, all to mention, the political empowerment gap in Jordan, we are now in 2018, we are um, 100. Uh, uh, 30 from 153 in the political uh, empowerment and uh, this is uh, the second uh, less uh, percentage for Jordan after uh, the economic pa uh, participation because we have one of the wo worst uh, numbers in the, the economic participation. Um, I think we should uh, also um, uh, Encouraging uh, the political will also to open the uh, the first uh, to include more women in the first positions in the uh, country. You know, uh, Jordan uh, never have um, prime minister, uh, women prime minister, or a speaker of house of uh, uh, women, and also 
uh, we uh, uh, with some of the association like the uh, Sharia court and the uh, constitutional court and uh, the uh, anti-corruption uh, 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 foundation. We didn't have any women in this or in, or in, uh, in all of this uh, association. Uh, so also the government should have. Uh, our gender sensitive uh, policy reflect in all uh, positions and in all legislation and in all uh, also uh, regulations. Um, um, actually, um, uh, always, um, uh, I want to mention uh, something that uh, also Jordan wants uh, a lot, and I will uh, finish uh, by this. Uh, also, uh, uh, Jordan focused a lot on um, uh, now on the sustainable development agenda, and we have goal five, and we have uh, as a civil society and parliamentarians, we have also now uh, a coalition uh, to work together to uh, to gap the uh, to, uh, to bridge the gap between uh, in the gender issue. I think we should uh, focus to get 50% in all kinds of elections uh, and uh, to uh, try uh, to be um, uh, a great leader in our uh, local and national uh, level uh, because our countries need us and we need uh, women uh, view and vision uh, to be part of the uh, decision making uh, Uh, representation of women in top management is quite modest. 
uh, where we rank uh, also on, on the indices that you have mentioned. For example, we are 138 from a total of 149 um, in the global gender index. If you look at uh, um, the, the, the why is this or where we are, if you look at the ecosystem or the environment, I think many of you touched on some of the reasons why we, we are in that state where uh, daycare needs to be activated, transportation needs to be uh, availed, uh, equal pay needs to be in place, equal benefits need to be in place. Um, if you look at the, uh, also inside the institutions, institutions need to adopt gender uh, sensitive policies, they need to make sure that uh, they provide the right environment, they provide a transparent environment, one that allows equal opportunity for women and allows equal opportunity for them to enter the workplace and to be promoted and to go up the ladder to, to, to become a part of the management. The business case, I think, for uh, uh, women is, is very clear, and I'm very happy that I'm on the panel today representing an institution that uh, decided to be, to be part of the solution, thank you to have. And we work extensively on the internal front as much as, as well as the external front. On the internal front, we're very proud to say that we all have uh, close to 50% of our uh, team who are women. We have 100% equal pay, equal benefit, uh, uh, allowances are the same, uh, health insurance is provided to the employee and family. If it was a man or a woman, we have a daycare for uh, children of men and women equally. We have a comeback program for those who have to be interrupted from the workforce and then want to come back. We have all the checks and balances on the funnel that we have, be it on the entry level, on the promotion levels, on every managerial level in the organization, to make sure that the funnel is actually uh, not uh, causing any discrimination of any kind. And I was saying earlier this morning that the actually the best part is that we do not have to deploy any uh, positive discrimination towards women. Actually, women need to know that they will not, not be discriminated against. They need to know that they're coming to a merit-based place and that they will be offered a fair chance and that is enough. And that will generate an order distribution. Of course, we're very happy because because of this, we become an employer of choice for men and women. Actually, we're the number one destination as an employer of choice for women. And we are among the top for, for men and women as well. Uh, and, as, and, and accordingly, we are actually lucky to be tapping into the best pools of talent and resources in the country. And the other part of that is the external part where we decided to be part of the solution to make sure we empower women. As mentioned before, um, unemployment is very high in Jordan. It's, it's a young country, 63% of the population are youth. We need to create something like 50,000 jobs a year. This is impossible to, to accommodate uh, by government nor the private sector. So we felt also that we need to empower the women to do their own businesses, to do their own startups, to, to actually lead their own SMEs. And we launched a, a, a program, um, a fully backed proposition for women back in 2014. And we're very happy that the results of both the internal and external have been great growth for the bank. Our journey since then has, has actually led us to great places. We've become the fourth largest bank in the country. Our portfolios have, uh, have, have increased drastically. Today, 36% of our clients are women. And actually, the growth in our portfolios varies between five times to seven times because of all of this. And, and as such, we feel that uh, uh, this is something that can be done. It, it is very important to create, create role models in, in, in Jordan uh, as institutions and uh, as individuals. Um, I would say that uh, um, also, of course, we felt that the, uh, the funding gap in Jordan is, is, is big. In 2014, it was estimated by the World Bank to be around $500 million. There are no more recent studies. And actually, the, uh, uh, the women-owned businesses actually are 16% of, of the businesses, but they are only 5% of them actually get uh, proper financial uh, services in the country. 
So we really believe that there's a big upside. We're very happy about the recent uh, improvements that happened in the labor law and in uh, the social security law and in actually launching the national strategy and the action plan for women empowerment. And we're a very big supporter of that. We believe in being an active uh, actively lobbying for, for the improvement of the ecosystem and the economic uh, environment in Jordan. And we really believe this is the hidden resource for Jordan. And if we just focus in that direction, it's one way that we can really push our GDP and our growth. That's, that's amazing. Well, thank you. You just got me thinking, though. I mean, for someone to come and apply for a job at a bank or for someone to take advantage of a startup program or apply for funding or be a client, I mean, they have to have a certain level of education. Um, and this is the foundation of everything. And I think we have the experts, Shana Jahira, to tell us, you know, what is your outlook on education in Jordan? Uh, thank you, Mary. Let me start by apologizing for coming late. In Canada was behind my uh, late arrival because I was participating in and uh, Wafa Al Khadra was second reason. Uh, I waited for her. So, and I truly miss uh, Dima. I miss Dima. Really, uh, Haruti. However, I feel her energy in the place. I really, I touch her energy and I, I feel her heart around us. Um, uh, Mary, I have a problem nowadays with, with the idea of leadership and empowerment. Apologies on that. However, I really, I am not in Because I used to say that I am in the business of empowerment. Uh, our schools are about empowering them, Jordan, and uh, uh, empowering women and men of Jordan. Uh, we want them to be uh, good citizens of Jordan and good citizens of the Arab world and the whole world. However, I truly believe nowadays that women are born empowered. However, the educational system, the ecosystem uh, are disempowering them. And we kind of uh, work on the idea of leadership, bringing out leaders. Uh, however, leadership is about bringing, celebrating the inner part of the self. It's about, it's, it's, it's a journey towards the inner part of the self, the outer part and the other. And unfortunately, uh, the educational system, not just in Jordan, in the whole world, kind of disconnected the individual from his, her inner part, from the other. So we kind of isolated the diversity, isolated, celebrated diversity, uh, and we kind of jailed our human beings, our souls, the female soul and the male soul in the classroom. Uh, and due to that, we kind of jailed our shared humanity. So that's, uh, so I would like to talk about leadership as, uh, as a journey towards the rational self, towards the emotional self, towards uh, uh, the political self, and towards the other, and towards the collective. So if we don't know truly, we don't realize our own potential, our shared humanity, we will never be able to bring out genuine, authentic, uh, solid leaders to the world. We will always uh, be faced with a huge challenge, which is the, dis the uh, and Jordan is facing, the disconnect between the cognitive and the behavior. On the cognitive level, we, we all agree on democracy. On the cognitive level, cognitive level, we all agree on women's participation. Uh, we all agree uh, on empowering the women of Jordan. However, on the behavior, we kind of uh, uh, we, we don't talk about uh, corruption. We don't talk about uh, uh, discrimination. We don't talk. Yom bil badlaman, kilmet tahrush, ish tahrush. Harassment. Harassment. Because how can why if we don't truly face our reality and be able to bring out rational, critical, humane, ethical, uh, life celebrated, you know, life, 
I, I, I would like my students to celebrate art and music, not just physics and chemistry. We need to bring in back the holistic, the integral view of education to our educational system. And to be able to do that, we need to bring our national agenda to the table. We need to bring, to invite Kara, uh, we need to invite Tafid, uh, we need to invite Arabic, and we need to understand the Jordanian context. I'm so proud of Wafa, the ugly Wafa. Wafa Ben Mustafa is an example of, of a woman that understands that context, truly is part of the Jordanian context. She's not Amal Gharbiya, Ma'alish Ahti Hek, Amal, Smahiri Fiha. Yet, she's very connected, she's very connected with, uh, with us, uh, the Ammanis. Yeah, I'm not, I don't represent the Ammani community, but she, she, she understands the Judean context and she is really inviting authentic, genuine change to the table in the parliament, in her partnership with the uh, civil society, and she would connect with someone like Habibna Nadia that really invites uh, change to the table and with someone like Hala Latouf, uh, who and I was really honored to learn from Hala. And I, I just, I saw Sausan in the journey here. Hi, Sausan, Raisa Tajan Amar, another hero, uh, where she works with us all. She invites her own self, her Jashiyan, her uh, norm and understanding of Jordan to, uh, to us, and she invites all of us to the table. She, she work, we all work in partnership. Uh, so I believe that uh, I'm very hopeful, by the way, about Jordan. I really, I, I truly believe that Jordan is a, is a center of hope. And if you come into my schools and talk to any of my graduates and students, uh, they will tell you that they are in the heart of their school, their school is in the heart of Jordan, Jordan is in the heart of the Arab world, and, and the Arab world is in the heart of the whole world. And they, uh, they truly believe that they are there to transform Jordan, to transform our world into the better. They are about shared, our shared humanity. Uh, uh, so I'm very hopeful, and I truly believe that we're going through a genuine movement on uh, our political reform, cultural reform, and educational reform. And we all need to align to make this happen. Because we need to understand what do we mean by political reform. It's not something that we are, uh, uh, we are throwing at our people. We're inviting our people into the table where it is about their future, the future of Jordan, and the future of our shared humanity. No, I mean, thank you. No, thank you. I mean, thank you. I, I certainly share your optimism, and I am very hopeful. And I'm not an Amman, by the way. <laughs> I'm someone who's, who's lived all over the world, 25 years in the UK, and someone who chose to come back and contribute to the society because I believe in it so much. And we've launched a $100 million growth fund to invest in businesses in Jordan, so I'm very bullish. <laughs> and very excited about it. And one of the reasons why I'm excited about Jordan is because of the youth. I mean, we all talk about the youth unemployment as a burden, whereas we see it as a true opportunity if we can support our youth presently. And we're very pleased to have Lina uh, join us on this panel and really represent uh, the youth voice. And we'd really like to hear from your perspective and your experience, you know, what have the challenges been? What are the options? Yeah, so I'm so happy to be here uh, among so many amazing women that I'm learning from. So I wanted to answer this question by sharing my backstory very briefly, I promise. So I studied five years of architectural engineering, and then I did a one-year civic leadership fellowship, two years of experience in an INGO. Now I'm an art teacher, and I'm going to be studying Global Affairs Masters in the fall. Meanwhile, uh, since the age of 18, I've been producing art, short films, poetry, and I also started my initiative, Art and Smile. So now, for all of you, you might be thinking, wow, this girl really has no clue what she wants to be when she grows up. But the reality is I know exactly what I want. Um, I, all of these experiences are building towards creating my dream career. 
I don't believe that we find our dream jobs or our dream careers. I believe that we paid them and we make them. And so I think taking this hard path, this path that not many people take, is something so difficult for youth in Jordan simply because we've been conditioned to this definition of success. And so I think it's so important for all of us to, to think like entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs have that faith and that confidence to invest in their own dreams. And so obviously there's many challenges that would face someone who's taking this type of path, whether that's society or gender stereotypes or family or relatives, many things. My mom's here in the audience and she can vouch for when I would leave the house at 8 a.m., come back 12 p.m., painting and doing art programs in underserved parts of Amman, and she would go crazy. But the idea is these challenges would be worth it if we're really truly investing in our dreams. And so I think what we should aim for isn't, you know, a, you know, increasing the participation of women in the workforce. I think we need to empower women to create alternative forms of, uh, you know, employment. They should be the pioneers that create a new vision for Jordan. Um, and so I'm so glad that I'm in my startup where they do invest in people's dreams. And I think it's important for all of us to think of our roles in making that shift in mindset. How can we really empower you to look at themselves and truly invest in their own dreams? Uh, we are running late. We have 10 minutes left. So I'm going to get to some uh, calls to action. So the Deputy Secretary General of the UN was here recently. And she's really explaining to us that we have 10 years you know, left. Uh, so we're supposed to meet our FDP. Uh, according to some studies, at the rate we're going, we're going to reach it for tonight. So we need to get going. Um, and we also know that George is somewhere 120 years below your rank <laughs> on the gender gap somewhere around 136 years of the world. So given the urgency, you know, of uh, where we are in Jordan and globally, I'd love to hear from each one of you, let's say uh, one recommendation, let's keep it one recommendation, and I'd love to hear your personal commitment to women in Jordan as well. And we'll just go down. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I think we have to do things differently. We've been doing, working on women empowerment and working on women issues in Jordan for the last 20 years. And what we've done, and people do not like to hear that very much, has not come with the results we want. And I really think we have to change the way we do things. And people do not always like what I say. So I'm committing to always be the one who says, well, we have to make women issues again a national issue, an issue of importance to all Jordanians that they care about not like the 10 or 13. To do that, it has to be owned by everybody. So that's why uh, to keep on doing that. And I, I, I will keep on working so that, you know, to all three number one. <laughs> no, okay, but I think uh, it's, uh, it's who I am. It's human rights. I cannot live unless I believe this is who I am. And I cannot accept that I am less than any man. It's just, you know, that's me. Who are my facts? But <laughs> Um, I will keep fighting for women rights and for women. <laughs> Actually, uh, as Haitha mentioned, we have now uh, fighting <laughs> about uh, labor law, uh, and I think uh, uh, it should be a, a very uh, all of the women should be very powerful to keep fighting for their rights uh, inside the, uh, not only the parliament, everywhere in Jordan. And uh, also, I, I think it's very important to also, uh, I will comment to, to uh, keep the door open for the new generation of, of girls from Jarash, from uh, different uh, districts uh, from Jordan, to be part of uh, the political life in Jordan. This is very important. We need to encourage uh, the new generation to engage with their uh, public uh, life. Uh, and um, I will keep also fighting for, uh, 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 fighting against political violence and cyber 
uh, violence against uh, women because this is affect a lot uh, and uh, uh, this is something uh, go uh, very swiftly uh, by the, uh, the social uh, media uh, and uh, its effect uh, on many of uh, women leaders. So I, I will try to, to keep uh, fighting. <laughs> So as a great believer of both the power of arts and women, I'm going to be trying to utilize both of these things in order to, to truly um, empower the women in Jordan. Uh, currently as an educator, I am working on a program uh, where we empower girls to express them th themselves through filmmaking. And as Arky Smile, we are pledging and committing to empowering and establishing at least five women-led um, artistic projects in Jordan. Um, well, for Jordan, I think what we need to do is uh, implementation and enforcement. That's the name of the game. I think we have a lot of good strategies and good laws. We just need to make sure they're in place. That would ensure the equal pay, the good environment, the, the, the solution to all you know, the daycare and the solution to, to all what we need. Um, I truly believe also that it's worth actually giving an incentive. I mean, we're at a stage where we need to accelerate. So I really think that it's worth giving a kind of a tax incentive, a social security incentive to institutions that get a gender seal and achieve uh, improvements and growth in, in uh, women's uh, economic participation. Of course, non-financial services or the need for uh, training, literacy, mentorship is, is key because uh, this goes hand in hand with, with, with everything you do and it is key to success. Uh, as for the commitment, um, I would say as an institution, I'm very proud to say that we actually commit to so many things and we got them on the ground. You know, like the things I mentioned, the benefits, the pay, the daycare, the financial the, uh, literacy, and the non non financial services. This year, I, we're trying to implement uh, some flexible hours. Of course, this is a bit tricky because we're a public uh, facing uh, industry. But we will, we're just working on a scheme where I hope by next year we will have a very reasonable uh, proposition, if you wish, in, in the job set that, that where it is possible to actually offer flexible working hours. Um, and uh, on the personal level, I think uh, also I, um, I've been working a lot with entrepreneurs and I've been angel investing and I hope I'll be able to put more of that uh, on the ground, and especially women on the business. <laughs> Uh, I definitely uh, support uh, what's up in most of the campaign. Uh, so I mean, we're having the elections, uh, 2020, uh, September 2020 elections, and I will support what's up campaign with all my uh, uh, with all my heart, action and, and uh, mind. I would uh, protect my mother's dream. My mother started uh, a, a women's association in Zerka in the late 50s, beginning of the uh, uh, 60s in Jordan. And she started the first nursery in Jordan, established the first women association, the first nursery, and the first uh, public transportation for women in partnership with, uh, with the Zerka municipality, the private sector and the uh, civil society. So I will continue uh, serving her dream, which is about justice, uh, women's uh, empowerment, freedom, and uh, our shared humanity. And I will continue supporting uh, every single uh, youth in my school, uh, protect their spine, protect their happiness, protect uh, their journey into the inner part instead of the outer part. And I'm committed to uh, serving the Palestinian women and planting trees in Jordan, Palestine, and Suf and Jarash. And, uh, uh, I will continue taking care of our farm and uh, Zay. Thank you. I just here, so I think 
I share your commitment to support Wakaf. And I think a lot of people in the room do as well. What I'd like to do is ask an additional question. I'm interested in seeing you know, how, how can average people, the people in the room, how can I, how can you support me? Because <laughs> You shouldn't feel that you're fighting alone because you are fighting the battle on behalf of so many of us. We have to understand from you what can we do. Um, she thanks everybody. She thinks she'd rather that you support the idea of supporting women versus just a person. And uh, she thinks people who want to change from their heart, who want to change from their own feeling, and very sincere, are the people who should be and working for women and the people who should really be support. Uh, she thinks um, she likes, she wants to thank Jordanian women who have supported her and she, uh, uh, really uh, enabled her to, to reach uh, where, where she is. And I actually think that this, this is um, uh, something that Jordanian women are the key supporters who can really make a change.
participation. Um, I will talk here about really the uh, uh, panelists, two minutes, uh, to give us a kind of message, the final recommendation, or maybe a call for action, and then we'll be off to the floor. Actually, hi, I forget us. We, we come back to that if we have time at the end, just sort of pick up on a few more uh, panels around uh, around the world. If we have time, I'll come back to you. Thank you very much, sir. Hi. Uh, I think we can now go to Aman. So just... oh, uh... Okay, uh, Aman uh, and Mary, uh, can you hear me? Uh, how, did, how did your session go? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Well, we can, and we've got you up now. Yeah. Great, you thank you. So I've been given a summary, but I'm ignoring it, and I'm going to pull out the main points that I jotted down, so excuse me. Um, I'm also going to include as part of our panel, we had our ambassador from the Netherlands and from Canada who made some interesting points. So uh, on the Netherlands side, I think uh, Her Excellency Barbara was talking about how confidence is so important and we almost need to spoon feed it into the minds of our uh, young ones, which I do with my daughter every day, by the way. And we also so spoke about the support of fathers and you know the role that men play. Uh, and also, uh, the ambassador mentioned that the Netherlands is also going through challenges, which made me feel a little better as a Jordanian. Uh, the ambassador from Canada was also talking about how progress uh, when it comes to gender issues can largely be attributed to the current leadership of Canada and that they recently passed a gender-based budget. She spoke extensively about violence against indigenous populations and women and girls in particular and how that really leads to a healing process that needs to happen. Uh, she spoke to the issue of the word feminist and how that could be a more inclusive and non-binary term uh, to use when we're talking about gender issues. Uh, now turning to the panel, uh, we looked at the overall context in Jordan, and here Hala to my left was saying how there had been some progress, but she thought we would be somewhere else. She drew attention to uh, the issue of women working in the informal sector, and how really broadly what we need is a full social transformation uh, in mindsets uh, in particular. Uh, a lot of the panel today was focused on our dear parliamentarian, who now we are all supporting and will be going out to protest with. Uh, she spoke about how in 1993 we started with uh, one lady in parliament and now we have 20, which is about 15.4% of the parliament and the same in Senate. But she was referring to how it's still a process and our cabinet, for example, here started with many more women and now we have few. And she really focused on how we need quotas in all parts of, of the government, so not only in parliament, but in constitutional courts uh, and so on. We then turn to women in business, and I have a fellow uh, leader of the private sector with me, Nadia, who's the CEO of the leading bank in Jordan. And she really spoke about the, the opportunity, the upside, if we were able to integrate women into the workforce and how that would ultimately lead to a growth in GDP. She spoke about the enabling environment that we need for women in businesses and how many gender sensitive uh, policies and they instituted that in the bank. Uh, so that's the FTC, anti harassment, daycare, transportation, and she even spoke about a comeback program, which I think would be interesting to do in my business as well. And she spoke about the importance of empowering women uh, in startups, and she had a positive outlook overall on the changes in legislation. We talked about uh, education, and we had her fellow Sean talking about how women are essentially born empowered but end up being disempowered through the structural systems that be, including the education system. She spoke largely about the disconnect between the cognitive and the behavioral, and how we really need to be connecting uh, those two. And we really have to understand the Jordanian context to get out of that man focused mindset. Um, and we also said at the beginning, perhaps this event should take place outside of that man uh, next year. Should I stop? Uh, do you know, that was fantastic. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, were, were your rapporteurs notes longer than yours? Uh, you've given us a very comprehensive... Uh, uh, I have more, but I'll stop. <laughs> so we can hear everybody else. Thank uh, you. Okay, well, maybe we'll have you here next year, if we can get everyone over. Thank you. Uh, right, uh, I know you've got a big audience here, so continue the debate uh, with your uh, assembled people there. We can go to our moderator friend, uh, in the Joker, um, and they wrote solutions uh, with your big audience there. Let's talk us through your group. Our panel was um, quite robust, and uh, the discussions were quite robust. And uh, we had insightful conversations, uh, maybe uh, from the audience. And uh, we look at several issues, showing that uh, young people hear these conversations, but we don't uh, just have these conversations of empowerment. 
young people don't have access, and how do we then uh, ensure that we avail these organizations and that they are accessible for young people? And uh, also encouraging women all over to be fearless and take up space. And this is encouraged by our very own, I'm sure all of you are aware of that, uh, Josephine Tunsu, who's uh, currently Miss Universe. And uh, we are moving with that agenda, which is encouraging women to take up space. And uh, also encouraging women um, to be sisters keepers, uplifting one another and uh, ensuring that when you occupy a position of power, that as you rise, you lift others, that it's not just about first black, first female, first this, and, and not recognizing opportunities of bringing others with you. And of course, we are going to um, share the summary with everyone. These were just pointers that I, I took top of my head. As you know, technology, um, it's difficult to know when you're going to be crossing to us. Uh, but that's uh, largely what we focus on. And also that uh, we also looked at some women creative blockages um, in, in advancing women leadership that oftentimes it's personality issues that block us uh, from unpacking some of the opportunities that are, access, that are available in order for more women uh, to access. And uh, lastly, we also talked about opportunities within the agricultural space how we can create working groups um, in, in ensuring that ladies lead um, and, and Africa connects to the, the global space. And that leading us to just being so grateful for this opportunity that we can connect at this level as um, we, I guess, push the women agenda. That is, that is fantastic. Thank you. There's always about the influence of videos, online videos that we can share in a really wide range of lockdown. And also talk about using technology and using many platforms as a strong way of influencing any possibility. And the idea is to do that, and particularly the idea of someone being just one step ahead. So the person is one step ahead of someone to help the person to come behind them. And a great slogan of one of the organizations of our panelists, so if she did it, so can I. We talk about legislation and how legislation is designed to service all women at work and bring benefits. But also increase the uh, problems as well. So we talked about those challenges um, and some of the opportunities to better working and the positive opportunity to help women. And also online resources in the range of online education that's now available is also something particularly to help women in this Irish context. We have representatives in the education sector, and of course we talk about the examples of that, and particularly the early childhood learning that we believe that we really need to start it from three years old. Should be equal and free because that's the only way of imposing some of the structural gender gaps we experience and interviewing with education of parents and other departments as well. And from a business perspective, we also talk about pay gap and the structural reasons for pay gap, about the challenges that there are and the changing over time. But generally, the balance of our contributors from the audience as well, and so the need for more transparency in pay. And also, in general, some more quotas as well across a range of areas, including the private and government sectors, as a way of really making some radical changes that we need to prevent some of those inefficiencies. Jim, that's uh, absolutely brilliant. There are so many things you share right around as well. And you picked up much more on the online education and information side. I think we did in that. Uh, okay, uh, but now to make very much. We finally, uh, Karachi uh, Ambassador Tia, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. We are the last in the group, but not the last of the answers. Um, we had a very robust discussion with the people in the student panel. And I just want to give you some of the information for discussion. Um, we have thought that the onus remains on the institutions and state to make sure the legislations regarding women's protection and women in Hollywood. That has been passed or that are already existing to be actually implemented so that women have proper protection systems. Similarly, the state has no responsibility to call the religious fundamentalism that has severely affected the status of women in Pakistan and their empowerment. Pakistan has passed several legislations, but not enough alternative action to push for a larger percentage of women. Institution in most of the case and structure in Pakistan. 
too long, so I'd like to invite her to give a closing comment. But before you leave, we're going to have an open discussion, which Jazz just told me. So we're going to have Lena speak for about 30 seconds, and then we're going to open it up to a few questions. Very briefly, I'm so honored to be among so many amazing women and change makers in one room. I feel like all of you probably paved the way for me to be here. And these conversations that we're having today um, are going to empower little girls to become amazing leaders in a different society. So I think we should all probably give ourselves a round of applause and also, you know, renew our intentions for what we're going to be Hello, this was a very good speech. My name is Reem Seiso. I am one of the founding members of the Global Thinkers Forum in London, and I sit on the advisory board here. So I want to convey Elizabeth's greetings and invite you all to hopefully join our mentoring program. Now, Ms. Haifa, when you said empowerment, you opened my eyes to something. It's not just about empowerment, because back in 2003, I started Jordan's first ICT strategy at the Ministry of Education, and through the training of 100,000 teachers, we reached 1.4 million students from public schools and UNRWA. And by the attestation of international assessors, they were fully enabled, knowledge, economy, ICT-based, fully enabled students. But what did we do? We release them into an environment that's more filled with inhibitors than enablers. Because we don't have the supportive legislations and the enabling environments, namely ease of opening new business, IP rights, you're talking about knowledge-based economy, these services, new products. And I would like to just uh, humor you on the topic of sexual harassment. Back in 2005, I was at the Prime Ministry at the National Agenda of Jordan. And um, we were sitting in the session for the Labour Employment and Vocational Training uh, with the Ministry of Labour and Vocational Training. And here comes me wanting to do something good for women. And I say, what about sexual harassment? You know what's happened? All the men turned their, fa their faces away. And I felt all alone in the room. And I looked at the two ladies with me, you know, and say something. They actually did under the table. And that was really, really the attitude back then. So we've come a long way as far as it seems. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, my name is Hadi Hadashni. I'm a co-founder of Notch. Um, I do have a note on what you said about the uh, salary gap in the Netherlands, and I think it's almost everywhere else. So what we do in Notch is that we're building science kits uh, for kids and for teenagers. And when we were doing the research in the market, we could find that almost all the chemistry, let's say crystals or so on kits were, were pink. Like they were just pink. And all the physics kits were blue and they, uh, the illustration ones were ink for boys, divided. So now, fast forward to now, where um, the jobs that pay the most, let's say, and that are in demand, uh, the IT, engineering, uh, computer science majors are filled with, with males rather than females. So I think it's like you said, you have to dig deeper that it's not just the, the jobs, it's even the education, the environment around them, and so on, everything around them. So thank you. Well, at the moment, the salary gap is uh, related to the salary for the same job, same conditions, same uh, job scale. Um, so that is the way to be calculated. So even within the jobs, there is a salary gap, and I agree with you. Uh, women tend to choose perhaps other professions that are perhaps less valued, but even within, let's say, uh, healthcare or education, also there you see there's a salary gap. And I think the situation is actually worse than we think what it is. It also turns out that women can, uh, or diversity in general, they need more performance, better profits, higher productivity. Uh, so in a way, the salary, the salary gap, if you would not make it to the number of hours, but if you would link it to productivity, would even be much bigger than just the 9%. That of course I now might be overestimating the productivity of women. <laughs> for the panelists, and I would say that there are a lot of love and care in this room. Um, uh, um, we're all got up, and we're all ready to support. We're not, we're not planning to put any pressure or stress on you to reconsider your decision, but I, like I felt that I need to say this. I would like to capitalize on two points brought up by uh, Haifa, or by uh, Hala. Uh, Haifa mentioned that we are born in power, but then you uh, just, you grow up sometimes in, in an environment that has many barriers to get the best out of your potentiality and self-actualization and your political, economic, and social mobility. And then Hala said that it's after two decades, we would say that we are still with so many challenges. It's very important that we look at the root causes. When we learn the language, and I always say, if you learn a language where you are totally absent with symbolic annihilation, you learn your own displacement. Your agency learns your, the, its own displacement. And two, when you look at the regulatory a trajectory that we have here, when you know that you're sitting around the table and my colleague, the male colleague, is entitled to get four wives, regardless of the fact that this is a choice or not. The fact that this is part and parcel of your psyche, of your consciousness and collective consciousness, it creates this power disparity. And as a result of that, we live according to power relations. So yes, we need to go to the intrinsic structures and root causes of this empowerment. Thank you very much. First, I would like to uh, second what I just said. Okay, when you're 20% of value, you're already second class. When you're one quarter of technology and one half of intelligence, that it becomes you know, part of society. But uh, I've heard a lot talking about you know, incentivizing women, mentoring women, empowering women, teaching women. I think the major problem is the men, actually. I'm afraid to say that. And the men, we've spent years sending the boys in classrooms to learn accounting and uh, business and trade, and sending the women 
I'll give to them cooking. I'm taking care of babies. And I recall I went to the only co ed school in New York and we used to look forward to the kids coming back because they'll bring the food and yellow and the cakes while we did the serious business and then you did the serious stuff. And so, what do we expect after a year the society has been geared that way? I think it's about time that we reverse it. Maybe we try to education, send the men to them, some cooking and nappy and bath of changing. Okay, let's send the woman to go to the business and reset the balance. I think there's a lot of work to be done on the main uh, part of the general problem. Sorry, I just I was uh, offered to speak first, and I thought we ought to be um, uh, have, a, have a word. But um, and just to start off uh, where you just did about completely agree, this is much more actually about men than just about women. And um, <clears throat> on behalf of one of us, thank you very much for all that you've done and said. Um, look, a couple of things. Um, we all, all the international community here, pretty well. We want to help you change. Is that, that, that the principle is fairly clear. Uh, there are lots of organisations, organisations that have you, that all of us individually, we want to help change. There are various practical things that we also know will make more difference than others, like getting a transport system that will enable women to get to work safely and at an acceptable cost, like getting healthcare, uh, like getting uh, nurseries, childcare. Um, like, and I'm struck by Nadia's point about incentivization, not a normally follow the sense of certain, when they look at tax structures and things like that. All of that we should do, and I think you know, one almost we'll needs to sort of campaign behind you know, 10 key changes. But my real question, I guess, to the panel is what works in Jordan? Because it's fine us doing this according to our sort of international year, what, what works in Europe, what works in the US, and so forth. What works, what works here because it's different. And I think, you know, I keep coming back to you know, the, the statistic that, you know, which is the female participation rate is, is uh, say, 16. What is the number of proportion of women in the university? And it's well over 50. Um, and it's, the, it's something to do with the culture. Um, and I just wonder how, not, not to admire the problem, but what is it that we can do to help you address the cultural issue? As well as the practice. Uh, thank you, Edward. And you know how much we are thankful for the international community for believing in Jordan and supporting Jordan. Uh, however, I feel that this is part of your responsibility because Jordan is protecting the whole world. We're protecting the borders of the world. And if you don't support the resilience of Jordan, then, then Europe will lose, England will lose, the whole, our shared humanity will lose. So thank you, but yet, this is part of your, uh, I believe it is, it's a, uh, I truly don't believe that uh, you can help us change, and we don't want you to help us change. What we need to do is to look into our own culture, celebrate our rootedness, and yet be able to change what we feel that it must change. Uh, it's, it's for us, it's for Jordanians to truly understand our reality, uh, be able to be critical about our reality, and invite change as, as part of our authentic and genuine journey to the self. And after doing that, being critical of the, our reality, invite the other. We need to learn from uh, the, West, the Westernized understanding of education, experience. We need to look into the whole world. However, for us in Jordan, we we need to look be part of the East. We and we need to celebrate our Easternized rootedness and culture. And uh, we need to open up to South Africa and learn from their experience. We need to open up to to, uh, to the Southern, to Latin America, and really understand what's going there. 
and how are they transforming their communities. So we need to connect with the international community. Uh, yet you need to understand our reality. And when, when it comes to the Jordanian culture, uh, it is for us to really be able to understand our own cycle of change, our own cycle of transformation, uh, and be proud of our rootedness. I truly believe that without having such a dialogue proudly in our Arabic language, using Arabic, and fighting, you know, I, I express myself better than Arabic. I'm not fluent like it. I'm not, my fluency is not as, as Wafat fluency. I would have expressed myself better in Arabic. So we owe this to our own selves. We cannot let uh, our children connect with their English language better than connecting with their Arabic language and their Arabic heritage and their, uh, their own civilization and be able to be able to truly invite change, we need to understand the inner self, our own identity, go beyond our identity into inviting our entity, and go beyond our entity into inviting our internationalism and universality. We will continue going and, 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 and uh, in vicious circles unless we proudly surrender into our own rootedness and our own identity and into its, its uh, positive part and negative part and after surrendering into our own culture we will be able to proudly invite the change that we need to do. We cannot be put in a defensive or an offensive uh, corner. We need to be more proactive and to be able to do that uh, I think that uh, uh, educational reform is a must, but it, it has to be um, it has to be invited in a, in a very sensitive and in a very uh, rootedness way. People need to feel that they own the change. Uh, we need to understand that uh, women's empowerment, women's uh, Participation in in Tafide, in the uh, workforce it has been there, but there is an experience in Tafide that is a little bit different than the experience in Erdogan. But we need to invite a national kind of agenda, put the national agenda on the table, and critically look at our uh, reality, and of course be be proud of our uh, relation with, with with the whole world. Uh, um, I don't know. I think I think that uh, change is coming, transformation is coming, and what we need you to do is to continue believing that uh, Jordan has been established on the basis of moderation, modernity, enlightenment, and uh, look into the story, the Jordanian resilience story and continue supporting Jordan, and we will be able to change. I think change is, is a process, it's a journey, and Jordan is going through this journey in such a beautiful way. We need to be patient. Jordanians need to be patient, need to be uh, perseverant, and we need to continue investing in our youth and be really believe in them and offer them spaces of expression. Like today, I'm so thankful to inspire me today. I believe that art and, and uh, art will, will transform the culture. We need to reshape our culture. It's a journey, and we need someone like you that will celebrate art and instill it in our. Uh, we we need to go back into the depth here and enjoy it, and go back into enjoying reading Quran Karim. And we need to we need someone like you that will knock on my uh, mindset and help me unlearn, relearn. And uh, and uh, take the future forward. Thank you. Um, I just feel like it's so important when we're having these type of conversations to make a distinction of the definition of what women empowerment is in Jordan for a, a woman and infant versus, let's say, a white woman in the United States. 
Um, because there's obviously clear differences between white feminism, black feminism, Islamic feminism. And I just feel like um, for, in order for all women in Jordan to really be on board with feminism, I think we need to redefine what that is. Because obviously, each woman in each context will face additional challenges. So I, as a hijabi woman, I might face Islamophobia. We might face racism, colonialism, all these things that are additional layers that I think need to be understood by, um, let's say, the Western woman so that she can be able to truly support us in, in our journey. Thank you, and thank you all for all the comments. Definitely, I agree at least on most of the issues. Uh, I would like to mention something. I'm a university professor in the former center, laid out as I would like to mention the following. Uh, first of all, we have to remember when putting down solutions and discussing, we need to know the obstacles from the point of view of the workers themselves the people who face them. And when we put down recommendations and solutions, we need to consider continuity and sustainability for whatever we think of. Uh, the, the, if we think of examples, I'm a university professor. Uh, when I started as a business student back in the 60s, I was the only one of the few students in the faculty of sciences, not only in physics. Nowadays, we have more than 60% female students in physics. And same applies to all the other specialties in the university. Uh, if we think that people don't send their daughters because they're afraid and they don't want them to be late, etc., cultural values, this doesn't apply. They need a good cause and they need to feel comfortable. Uh, we find our graduate students coming, female students coming from Kara, and then going back late in the evening after 10 p.m. These are examples. Uh, so here what, I, uh, what I'm trying to point at is how important it is to have the role models, how important it is to have the mentoring and thank you for mentioning that. How important it is to have the support from all the sides. We do not need women to support women. We need society to support women. So we need to include and we need to redefine that this is a family issue rather than a personal issue. And that, that has happened quite clearly. Uh, as uh, a faculty member, there were very few, I was one of very few in the university. Nowadays, universities are full of female uh, professors in different disciplines, and this is a fact. So I hope I'm trying to lighten up uh, somewhere that doesn't look clear enough. Thank you. Thank you all so much for such an insightful and moving session. And since International Women's Day is just around the corner, here is the strong women in all walks of life. May we know them, may we be them, and may we raise them. Thank you so much.